Bud, what is this giant box that we found on the front porch today? It looks like a box of donation. Should we take a look inside? Also, you should totally not jump onto my workbench because that side iron iron could burn you and then you would be a burned kitty. That wouldn't be good. All right, I'm gonna take you off the bench and then we're gonna look inside this box. Hi Ben, enclosed in this box is the Texas Instruments TI-92 calculator I promised you a while back and a few other goodies I found at local thrift stores. Everything works at this time. I've also included the first prototype case I made for my ZX Spectrum One Per Child Open PC project. Oh gosh, oh man, I talked to this guy a long time ago. To give you an idea of the actual size of this after you mentioned it when I sent to the calculators last time. The case could have been made smaller, but I wanted it to be functional and kept the footprint roughly the same size as the 9-inch JVC monitor I used. The case has some design errors, like the keyboard connector getting in the way of the microdrive to microdrive connector. I'm an Atari ST fan. The case was printed at 0.3 millimeter layer height with eSun PLA+. Plus. By the way, the chap on the top is Alan Turing. Oh yeah, Alan Turing, who's also British, which is where the ZX Spectrum came from. Please feel free to do whatever you would like with the items I sent you. Feel free to plug my YouTube channel too. Okay, we'll get this on the thing here. By the time you get this, I hope you had a great Christmas. Well, that part was accurate. And, uh, and have a happy new year. 10P6, all right. Well, thank you for your generous donation. It was, man, I'm gonna have to dig through my email to find the correspondence about this. Wow, this, this is like one of those HelloFresh meals. And like, oh, here's the chicken, and here's the vegetables, and, and or what's the fancy word they use for meat? Protein. It's like, why don't you just say meat? Okay, yeah, there's protein and things other than meat. Sounds like there's some calculators in here. I'm gonna have to make another display shelf for my calculators. Oh, very nice packaging. I kind of weaned. <laughs> weaned myself off of the Goodwill hunting. Uh, that was kind of my big go-to in 2020 when there weren't any conventions. But at a certain point, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't need that much stuff. A lot of times people ask me, what do you do with all the portables you've made over the years? Well, the answer is I sell them all. Oh, this looks like, uh, oh, it's a TI-84. Oh, wow. They found this at a Goodwill? Uh, no programs in it, but it appears to be perfectly functional. Nice. I usually try to, uh, if I get duplicates of these, I usually uh, try to donate them, so I'll probably have a link below. Um, I like hoarding calculators, but sometimes if, if anyone uh, needs one, as long as the donator is okay with it, I, I try to pass them along because... Um, so today, I took my niece and went and saw Spider-Man, No Way Home. She'd already seen it, but I hadn't seen it yet. So now I've seen it. It's nice to see Doc Ock come back. Doc Ock is my favorite. Oh, it's an HP. Did he find these all at thrift stores? And I'm gonna dig up the email and check the correspondence. So as far as sending me stuff, oh, this is one of the modern HPs. Oh, nice. You know, I've never seen one like this at a Goodwill before. This it looks like um, it reminds. Oh, look, it's got it's got this, the same kind of keys as the um, what was that one we took apart? That was really unfriendly to repair. Oh, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, look, the enter button. Is this, this isn't reverse pulse notation, is it? Clear. Let's see, times five, enter, five, enter. Okay, five times five. Wait, wait, clear. Six, enter, six, enter, plus. Oh, it is. I mean, it's not an older model. It's, I mean, it's fairly new from what I can tell. Made in China, that's usually a good indication. Yeah, this one's neat. Ah, uh, yes, it does use reverse Polish notation or algebraic infix notation. I have no idea what that means. Oh yeah, it was deliberately designed to look like a retro calculator. Well, that, they succeeded. 
Oh, it's very cool. I've never seen this model before. Okay, I believe this is the TI-92. Man, this packaging is top notch. If this was something I bought off eBay, I would leave a comment. The packaging was top notch. Oh yeah, it's a TI-92. I wonder if it's which model TI-92 it is. So this one uses, um, I'm trying to remember how the batteries come out of this one. Yeah, I'm gonna need to populate it. Test access, do not touch. Oh no, I touched it. I looked at the trap, Ray. What is this module? A test module? Oh, it must be the, the ROM, I assume. Yeah, because you see how there's a depopulated one there? Well, yes, that probably is pretty critical to operation. This calculator, this was a major upgrade from the older line. This actually has a Motorola 68000 CPU instead of a Z80 equivalent. However, this one wasn't allowed on tests because it, it looked like a computer. <laughs> it's one of the reasons they still push these calculators in school today is because they don't have internet access. So if, uh, if there was a way for schools to disable your phone's internet access, I guess TI would be out of business. No, nobody wants TI to go out of business. It appeared like a computer, so a lot of schools a lot of, or a lot of SATs uh, would not allow it. So then what uh, Texas Instruments did, took this design and they, actually I think I have one right here. Yes, yes. So what Texas Instruments did was they took this calculator, shrunk the screen a little bit, and made the TI-89. Same CPU, but in the more acceptable academic... Academic. <laughs> for, you know, do you mean academic? Yes, the academic uh, form factor. Looks like it has a few columns out. Uh, there's two models of this. One of them has better contrast than the other. I'm guessing this is the one with lesser contrast. Oh, is it left and right to change the contrast? Oh, you push second and then positive negative. It doesn't appear to be having much effect. Perhaps we could take a look inside of this one later. Larger package here. Seems like it's in a couple pieces. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? There's magic in the air. What's this? Bum, 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 bum. Wow, man, this packing job is impeccable. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> oh, it's um, 3D printed. Yeah, it's a, this is a 3D printed ZX Spectrum keyboard. Yeah, it would be a ZX Spectrum because it's too large to be a ZX80 or 81. I'm a Yankee who owns a ZX Spectrum. So. Yep, that's what that is. Yeah, he said he was trying to 3D print a replica of a ZX Spectrum. I've included the first prototype case I made for my ZX Spectrum one per child slash open PC project. I love the ZX Spectrum. It's such a, it's such a compact little computer and the design decisions they made and all in the pursuit of cheapness are amazing. Like, amazingly brilliant, cheap design. I don't think the British get enough credit for their role in computing history. Not just <clears throat> Alan Turing and Bletchley and all that stuff, but the, um, um, you know, like the BBC Micro, Acorn, which became ARM, and then, of course, the ZX Spectrum, which was the cheapest computer by a country mile. Whoa! Wow, they must have a really large 3D printer. Oh man, big! ZX Spectrum OPC, one per child, designed by 10P6. Oh, it's got a relief of Alan Turing on the front. Do you know what the difference is between duct tape and gaffer's tape? Gaffer's tape is like painter's tape, where it doesn't leave a residue. And, much like Peter's tape, 
it costs a lot more too. Oh, it's even got a power supply in it. What is this for? Uh, threaded inserts. That's really cool. And then these were micro drives. Looks he has a custom breakout on the back. So he's got um, RST32 monitor voltage. Oh, okay. The expansion port. Wait, why is there a voltage selector, but there's also a DC voltage input? That's kind of weird. That is cool. That's a very large 3D print, too. All right. One more package. Hmm, what's this? I gotta leave the original box undisturbed. I wanna get footage of the inside of it. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, it's not another projector, is it? Did this guy predict the future? I don't think that's what's in there. Let's see what's inside here before we examine the box. Uh, yep, that's what's inside there. Okay, let's examine the box. LED, LCD projector system. Perfect for DVDs, pictures, and more. Is it? Convenient input support AV, USB, and SD. Did this guy plan to include this before I made those videos? Because if he didn't, that's some divine serendipity. Your favorite movie. Oh no, 240, 320 by 240 resolution. I wonder how much this cost. Uh-oh, due to continuous product improvements, the picture on the package may differ slightly from the actual product. Don't you mean the actual product might differ slightly from the picture on the package? Come on. Hashtag language. Freezing! Oh, oh this thing is tiny! Oh, ha, ha. It's like, it's like a Nat Snickers. <laughs> I was just making up Dave Jones faces there. You know, even though I like to poke fun at the 8-bit guy, I do really like the 8-bit guy, even though he's kind of dorky. I mean, obviously I am super cool. He does really, he does really good production values with his videos. And that outdoor studio he made is really cool. Unfortunately, he was in Texas when all that icing happened. Oh, wow. This does, uh... MPEG, AVI, Real Media, <laughs> MKV. Wow, Real Media, that's that's a deep cut. <laughs> oh my God, look, look at this, look at the specifications. Look at the <laughs> Native resolution, lamp language, contrast image size, color, power waste. <laughs> Out am I? Power waste. Are you implying this thing isn't worth turning on? <laughs> uh, power supply says 12 volt at 2 amps, so the amount of power wasted is accurate. Actually, you know, wait a minute. That's kind of sketchy. Like, if it's actually a 24 watt, well, of course, most of that's going to be the LED. I mean, really, shouldn't you have a larger power supply than that? You know, 33% more. Oh, it's got VGA and uh oh, HDMI. And it's got AVN and an SD card. Oh, good God, the power cable is so short it would make a Japanese console blush. So, I mentioned, yeah, I took my niece to see the new Spider-Man movie, which she'd already seen. And I was telling her, do you know Doc Ock was in the first Indiana Jones movie? And she's like, I don't think I've seen that one. And I'm like, I was like William Dafoe in the first Spider-Man. I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, no. My mom's only ever sh shown me the second one because my sister uh, actually, my sister is one of the more people than you might realize who actually liked the second Indiana Jones movie the best. All right, well, just offhand, this is this is wimpier than those other projectors I tested. Oh my gosh, it's the wimpiest projector yet. Well, my niece is upstairs in the living room right now playing Grand Theft Auto. And yes, I let her play Grand Theft Auto. It's really funny. I think it was, I think it was last Christmas. Last Christmas. So, my mom, my sister, and my niece, and I think, oh, was it the time two of my aunts visited too? Oh God, that was, that was a crazy night. There was one time they were visiting, and um, I know my mom was here at least. Uh, so it was like my mom, my sister, my niece, maybe some other people. And uh, my niece is like, 
I want to play Grand Theft Auto 5. And I was like, well, as long as your mom doesn't care, my sister's like, I don't care. I mean, my sister, you know, shows, shows her only one Indiana Jones movie, so clearly she doesn't care about the content she watches. So anyway, so we're sitting there, this is like a year ago, a year ago Christmas, you know, drinking like eggnog and stuff, spiked eggnog, and... <laughs> My mom is watching my niece. My niece and I are taking turns in Grand Theft Auto just seeing who can rampage the longest. And like my mom's reaction to it was so funny because she was like appalled at it because she's like religious and, and conservative and stuff. She was appalled at it, but at the same time, she was like just laughing hysterically. <laughs> it was so funny. Like it was the, her reaction to it was was the funniest thing. Because, you know, otherwise, you know, to me, it's just like, oh, whatever, it's a video game. But her reaction was hilarious. Because, like, oh, Ben, I can't believe you did that. Oh, Lydia, I can't believe you did that. And then she was like, ah! Oh, I'm going to say something really egotistical here. So, there's, this, there's, this, there's this phrase about siblings and parents. Like, if you don't know you're the favorite child, that means you're not the favorite child. So, if... <laughs> If I, if I let my niece play Grand Theft Auto, my mom doesn't care. Ah, <laughs> oh, wow, this one is, well, it's about the same. It's much more compact. It's probably got a similar LCD. Okay, so I'm guessing this is going to be for the fan. Anyway, oh, that was so funny. Yeah, see, this one has a populated four-pin jack. <laughs> watching like a 69 year old boomer actually I, mean, I could have made a video it'd be like boomer reacts to grand theft auto and i would have had like 500 dollars oh it was so funny see i have a really 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 dark sense of humor like that's the kind of thing that makes me laugh oh wow this one is um this one's different like it's got two mirrors look at that look at that whoa Oh, check that out. There's like, there's like a big bulbous bulb. Look at that. Around the LED. Hits this mirror. Goes to the frontal lens. Goes to the LCD. Frontal lens. Mirror. And then output. I mean, in a way, that's actually more compact. But it's probably why um, the screen, well, when I tested it, the, the throw or the size of the screen was much smaller than the other ones that I tested. This is well, weird that that's hand wired. The LED is hand wired to the board, but the speaker and the fan both have. Uh, a l oh, this one looks. This one has an unpopulated second speaker. Look at that. And then if you see, the fan is here. So I assume the fan is. Well, of course it's. Well, actually, let's see which way it's blowing. Let's see which way the wind is blowing. Okay, so the label's there, so it's blowing that way. There's no arrows. Well, that doesn't matter. So this, again, it's actually making an effort to blow air past the screen to like keep the screen clean and then blow it onto the heat sink. They glued it and screwed it. Well, I can't, I can't fault them for that. Well, that's not bad. In a way, it actually is more impressive than the $34 projector I looked at because, um, did that one, I can't remember, did the $34 projector have a thermal? Yeah, that's gonna be a thermistor, or it's probably a thermal fuse. Yeah, because it's in line. So if too much power is drawn, or actually, no, I'm sorry. If it gets too hot, it's gonna cut off the current. But then you see, the, the heat sink is secured by three machine screws, which we took out earlier. And that would explain why some of the screws were plastic screws and some of them were machine screws. But yeah, there's like a big magnifier in front of the LED. Oh, I suppose I, suppose I pretty much have to turn this on out of the case, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll do the best I can. Uh, oh! Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, it's pretty bright. Uh. While the design of this one is smaller and more compact, it also is just off first blush was significantly dimmer than the $34 projector. But it does have AV input and HDMI. Two of those screws in the case were actually to affix the uh, lens. So it's not as flapping in the breeze as the other units were. 
Whoa, look at this remote. All the buttons it has. This is bordering on comprehensive. Oh, before I set up this demo in my living room, so Artivision is a company that does licensed reproductions of video games and pinball machines. This is obviously Haunted House, which is a really awesome back glass for an old pinball machine by Gottlieb. There's multiple layers of glass to give it like dimension. So I bought this one at a show a couple years ago. I think it's about 125 bucks for one of these. So the guy there made me this. It's a custom Artivision based off the Bill Paxton pinball machine back glass. I sent him the PSD and he separated all the layers for me and he did it and it's really awesome. It's got like, what, three or four different layers. It's so cool. So uh, thank you so much to Artovision for providing me this. The reason I thought of this is because I have to take this off the wall to do this projector test. Uh, not exaggerating, this cord is maybe three feet. It's ridiculous. Wow, that's pretty awful. The projector is probably about Oh, I don't know, 10 feet away from the wall, and this is all the bigger I can get it. It's probably, what? Okay, maybe three feet? This projector is so tiny and flimsy that the weight of the HDMI cable is knocking it off the table. Oh, I had to hit the zoom button a couple times to get the whole menu to appear. Oh, this is fairly dour. Wow, look at that. It's like they're not even doing uh, interpolation. They're just doing like nearest neighbor. I don't know if you can see how jaggy the text is. I can see it with my eyes. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at Gulf and Western. Ah, does it appear on camera? Like, his bow tie is all crunchy. Okay, so like when you, um, when you scale an image, you know, there's different ways you can do it. You have like anti-aliasing or what do they call it? Like bicubic. But the method of scaling where you don't do any smoothing is called nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor. Um, so think of it like, uh, oh, everyone says this online, I hate to say it, but Mode 7. As if the Super Nintendo was the only system to ever scale graphics ever in the history of mankind. Yeah, this is not, this isn't doing any sort of image uh, interpolation at all. Oh, those reds look terrible. They actually look worse in person than they do over the viewfinder. I, I don't know how. So why don't they bring back uh, Short Round for a new movie? That that would be cool. And then he would be like, Short Round, you got tall. And yet, all that said, it doesn't have the screen tearing stuttering problem that the $82 projector did. Maybe that's because it's not doing any post-processing on the image. Well, this would be the scene where we'd see it. That looks smooth to me. Oh, Disney owns Indiana Jones now. Ugh. Now the fact that it's not doing any pixel processing, at least for HDMI, might actually be a good thing for retro gaming, although it might also look worse because it might not be exact pixels, but the pixels might not line up, which would make them look, again, even worse. As if that volume of water would actually manage to fill these caves, come on. Still better than Disney making it. Oh man, I need a coaster for my beer. Oh look, the Indiana Jones disc set includes a coaster. Okay, fits perfectly. I do like the dongle they include because it makes it easier to hook up something like a Super Nintendo here. All right, let's try AV input. Got a Super Nintendo. Okay, I switch it into 4-3 ratio mode having trouble getting a good focus on it. See, the text isn't pixel perfect, so there's actually, strangely enough, there is interpolation going on with this composite video signal. It's a great, uh, great game if you've never played it. Sunset Riders. It's like uh, Rolling Thunder meets Contra in the Old West. This is one of those Super Nintendo games that I bought back when I thought it was cool, and now it's like, kind of valuable. I'm having a hard time focusing, and also the screen looks blurry. I think it has to do with the way the pixels are being inter interpolated, which is funny, they, they don't do it for HDMI, but they do it for AV. So this was an arcade game first. Uh, the Super Nintendo port is incredibly uh, faithful.
So this little projector, um, it's better at HDMI than the $82 projector, but the image quality is pretty bad. But it is compact at least. But unfortunately, the pixel interpolation is bad on HDMI and it's also blurry for AV composite, you know, analog video. So yeah, not so great. No, don't drink that. You're not old enough. 10P6 emailed me back and said, yes, aside from the 3D printed case, this was all Goodwill finds. So that's pretty impressive. I've never found a TI-92 at Goodwill. I found TI-84s pretty easily, which is crazy because they still, I think they still charge like $80 for those at Walmart. We should try to get those in the hands of kids. So here's that module on the back. See that unpopulated service mount chip? I bet that's exactly... <laughs> But that's exactly what's in here. I can hear the Roomba above me. It's in my bedroom, under the bed. That's what happens every time. It goes in there, it kind of gets stuck. And then it runs out of battery. Well, I didn't really expect this. It looks like uh, two Atmel EEPROMs in here. I really thought it was just going to be like this package, duplicated. Huh. All right. Well, that's interesting. Well, I guess we do need this then. Precious tritium is what makes this whole project go. It's your standard metalized glue-in paper shielding. Just like all their other calculators. There's actually not a whole lot to it. I bet most of these are screen drivers. See how they're all the same chip? Yep, it's a Toshiba T6A39 LCD controller, and there's a whole bunch of them because there's a whole bunch of pixels. Now you see this inside of most old 80s and 90s vintage uh, electronics. You have an LCD and there's actually usually a quite a mess of controllers driving them. Now this is before they would embed the controller onto the glass itself or into the cable, so everything was external. Uh, well, yeah, actually, we had an example of that, that watch project that I never finished. Instead of all these chips driving the screen, the driver is actually there in the cable. That's actually an integrated circuit. That guy there is a Motorola 68000. That's the same CPU in the Sega Genesis and the Neo Geo. Then over here, I'm guessing, uh, oh, well, it's got a Dash 70, so that's going to be your RAM. So it looks like any programs that you store goes onto the same EEPROM module as the main code itself. Uh, yeah, so it's mostly, <laughs> it's mostly display drivers. Oh, son of a biscuit. My cat turned the Roomba back on. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on the other side except for buttons. Man, they spent a lot of money just driving that screen, didn't they? I think uh, a couple of the columns are out because probably there's an adhesive failure. Hmm, screen turned on. But there's nothing on the screen. Looks like there's one column out. Oh yeah, see if I compress it. If I compress the ribbon cable on the back where it connects to the PCB, it goes away. Hmm. Check some stuff online. They talk about putting the batteries in while you hold the delete key. Is that for this model or a different model? Is there even a del Is there a delete key in this thing? I see the screen trying to do something. We see some vacillations, but... Hmm. Okay, hold the apps key while applying battery power. Done. Oh, I briefly saw the menu. Did you see it? Oh, wait a second. This uses the diamond control key, not the second key. Oh, there it is! Hey, the screen looks less crappy now. I guess I magically fixed something by taking it apart. Well, I'm going to see if I... Well, it's got one column out over here. I'm going to cut a spacer and see if we can fix that. I'm going to compress it with my fingers for starters. Should also very slightly heat up the glue because of friction. Funky foam to the rescue. Well, if it works. If it doesn't work, then funky foam is, is a failed hero. Here's the real truth. The thing people love even more than a hero is seeing one fail to fall. 
They'll, they'll turn on you eventually, Spider-Man. I was kind of disappointed that Green Goblin didn't have more cheesy dialogue in the new Spider-Man movie. I could have used with some more Raimi style cheese. There was one part where they kind of, kind of did an homage to Raimi. Did I ever talk about Aliens the Musical on this channel? I can't remember. I thought I did, but it might have been in one of the many videos or projects that I started but haven't finished yet. It was one of the many ideas Max and I came up with when we were working on the show, because we were always coming up with silly ideas, you know, between camera setups and stuff. And I don't know, Aliens the Musical? I think it's pretty self-explanatory, right? There was only one song we had figured out for it. We didn't have the whole song figured out, but we have a good chunk of it. Um, it's after it's after the Marines find Newt. I well I can't really sing like a little girl, so I I guess I could do like the radio version of it, the Peebo Bryson version. Uh, it was like it was it was kind of like a bedtime, a bedtime song. So it's like good night, and then she's like try to get some sleep, Newt, and then Newt's like walking around. Do 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 boom 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 do boom boom do boom boom They mostly come at night mostly in my dreams dealing with these aliens is harder than it seems they took my little brother and then my mom and dad dealing with these aliens has made me very sad I mostly cry at night, sleeping on my bed, made of mostly garbage, my doll is just a head. But then there came an angel, a savior from above, to help me heal my broken heart and fill it up with love. Ripley, watch over me tonight. Don't turn out the light. These aliens will give a fright. That's about all the further we got. But yeah, I think it's going to be the biggest musical since Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Well, we need more songs than just one. <clears throat> I say we dust off and nuke the entire site from orbit. What? We gotta nuke, nuke it from orbit. It's the only way we can be sure. We gotta nuke, nuke, nuke it from orbit. If we don't, then there'll be more. What about my military prize? Nuke it from orbit. I'd make millionaires of all you guys. Nuke it from orbit. Yeah, this... Ribbon cable, it's failing in some spots. That's why part of the screen is blank. Over here, it's still glued down, but over here, it isn't. Uh, I'm not really sure how to fix this. Well, this is crazy, so call me maybe. I'm actually just using this tester's model glue and under the ribbon cable, and I've actually restored most of the columns. A combination of glue and pressure seems to work. I'm going to try the tester's glue plus a compression strip of funky foam. I was trying rubber strips, but I think they were a little too stiff. The tester's glue plus funky foam compression worked. Now all of the columns are restored. The LCD is still not great. Oh boy, a sine wave. We've still got some weak columns and rows on this screen. There's, there's two versions of the TI-92. One of them has a crappy screen, and then the, the, the other one has a better screen. I'm guessing this is the crappy screen version. As I mentioned, uh, I emailed the guy, and he responded back. So I have a little bit more background uh, behind the purpose of this. So back in the 1980s, in the UK, they were doing, I guess, like a competition for, like, who could make the best, you know, computer for education or the one laptop, you know, nowadays we call it like one laptop per child, although I think that thing is like pretty obsolete. But you know, it's like, oh, here's the, here's like the, um, the every man's computer or the every child's computer. And obviously, you know, you had the BBC Micro, which was funded by the BBC and 
made by Acorn, which eventually became ARM. That was obviously kind of the de facto standard computer. But what uh, 10P6 was doing with this was he was basically imagining what a spectrum version of such a computer might be. And that's why he has the micro drives and all the ports in the back, basically making a more kind of a more feature complete computer than just the humble specky with the tape drives because tapes suck. So thank you very much to 10P6 for the donations. And hey, check this out. This is the box it came in. Look at how well this is packed. Everything was packed in foam, then bubble wrap, and then surrounded by this cushion of air. This, yeah, this totally reminded me of like HelloFresh or one of those boxed meal services that claim to be more green than the supermarket, but probably aren't. So yeah, A plus packing job addendum when there weren't any shows to go to. I placated myself by uh, collecting the entire line of TI graphing calculators. But now I have duplicates. So yes, I have a duplicate TI-84 Plus. Another one, because I've actually had several. I've got a dupe TI-989. I've got a dupe TI-86 and a dupe I don't believe this one works, ADQ doesn't work. And then a dupe 83. Yeah, I've got these three dupes. So if you or someone you know or a student could use them, maybe let me know, uh, leave a comment below or email me using the link on benheck.com because uh, duplicates that I don't need, I try to get into the hands of students. All right, we'll see you in the next video.